Hi everyone, this is Jacob from the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. I'm here with Naomi Shin and Ava Nagata, whose current research focuses on migrant farm workers in Montana. So ladies, I have a few questions. First, what work are you doing and why is it important to you? Well, we, uh, we began this project um, in the summer of 2011. And for me, uh, I'm, an, I'm a linguist and I work on issues of bilingualism, Hispanic linguistics, Spanish and English in contact in the United States, and how children born in the United States acquire Spanish and English as bilingual children. And so this work is very important to me because the population that we're studying is a very interesting population. Um, you have a rather homogeneous group with a set of adults who are almost entirely, almost the entire population is born in, the, in Mexico, and then their children are almost 100% uh, born in the U.S. And so what I'm interested in studying is how the children acquire Spanish. And what happens right when they get in, at school age? Um, we know that English becomes their dominant language very quickly, so I'm very interested in this particular age between kindergarten and third grade, what happens to Spanish as English starts to take over and encroach on the space of Spanish. So that's what's interesting to me, and I've been extremely fortunate to be able to work with Eva Nagata, who used to be my student at the University of Montana, and now is my colleague in this research project. Well, I consider myself lucky to be involved in this project. Um, I, I have learned so much. I, um, linguistics is not my, er my area. I am studying to become a teacher, Spanish teacher. So in a way it's related, but um, like I said, I'm extremely lucky to be working with this, this project because um, this, this research means a lot to me because I am Mexican. And um, to me it's very important because I feel like even though the Hispanic community has a big presence in the United States, that the farm working community, the workers themselves, don't have the voice or the presence. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like a subculture within this great Hispanic community, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and so that's why it's important to me because um, just from finding out um, their personal stories, a lot of them come from um, escaping poverty, violence, mm -hmm. and um, so, you know, and then they come wow. here and they still sort of like invisible to everybody, you know, they come, they move from place to place, and yet we don't know much about them, especially the ones that come and work in communities like Washington and Montana. So that's why this, um, this project has um, been so um, close to my heart and very, very important. And even though it's a linguistic studies, I think there's a lot um, to learn about culture through a language, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, that's why I think it's very connected and because um, language is very, a very big part of a culture, so. Okay. And, um, that's why it's important to me. Okay. So the problems that you've identified with, you know, um, the, uh, the Spanish language becoming lost in English, et cetera, mm -hmm. How can people, I guess, find out more about those issues and get involved to help mitigate? Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful question. It, it is interesting and it's something we were hoping to touch on tonight in our talk a little bit. Um, one thing that is ironic and what, what we're seeing a lot of in this country is there are all these immersion, Spanish immersion programs popping up that seem to be targeting the Anglo population. <laughs> Yet, there's this, uh, it's, ve it's very sad to me and very unfortunate. There's a, the, a sentiment that somehow um, we need to be teaching the children of, of immigrants, of Latin American immigrants, we need to be teaching them English, English only. There's even a movement called English only. So what's ha what happens is we end up not really supporting the Spanish language skills of the children of immigrants or of, of people who are native speakers of Spanish and instead we push English only on that community. And at the same time, we're all of a sudden putting, putting money into uh, developing programs to teach the Spanish language to non-Hispanics, to the Anglo community. So it's very ironic and very, very upsetting. So what can we do to mitigate that? What we need to do is support bilingual, bilingual uh, 
education programs and dual immersion programs and really try to reach out to Hispanic communities and, and try to say, you know, look, we want to educate all of our children in both languages. To me, that's my dream, is that all of our children, regardless of their background, can be uh, educated in more than one language, starting from kindergarten, first grade. That's, that would be the goal. Um, and I think that it's starting, people are starting to realize the benefits of bilinguals and, mul and multilingualism. Yeah. So maybe that will happen eventually. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. I think so, yeah. I, I pretty much agree with what she's saying. And, right. You know, so. All right, well, thank you, ladies, for uh, having uh, sharing a few thoughts with me. And uh, to our viewers, tune in next time. Thank you so thank much. You. And thank you to the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center yes, for hosting us you. tonight. Oh, no problem. <laughs>